So it's um, 1995. I'm in an Arabic typography class at the American University in Beirut. The Civil War had just ended a few years back, and I didn't know that the program that I was studying in was one of the first in the region on graphic design. Our teacher showed us this uh, image of three ceramic plates inscribed with Arabic calligraphy, and he named exotic cities like Nishapur and Samarkand of where they were made. To my surprise, they, may, they were made hundreds of years ago, but it struck me how modern and attractive the design of the calligraphy on these plates was. In 2010, I was invited to participate in an exhibition commemorating 100 years of Islamic art in Europe. And as a woman, an Arab at the time, I only had one thing to say. I wanted to say no. And in Arabic, to say no, we say no and a thousand times no. So I started looking for a thousand different no's on everything ever produced under Islamic or Arab patronage, patronage in the past uh, 1,000 years. I collected my findings in a book, and the installation went on display in Munich in 2010. In January of 2011, the revolution started in Cairo. And for nine months, all I did was collect information as a historian on the revolution online. Nine months later, a video emerges of these people being killed on the street and piled like garbage in Tahrir Square. And the historian in me decided to step aside. And I started taking the no symbols that I designed, and I started spraying them on the street and adding messages to them. The first one I sprayed was no to military rule, no to emergency law, no to military trials, no to a new pharaoh, no to stealing the revolution, no to bullets, no to tear gas, no to sectarian division, no to violence, no to killing, no to burning books, no to stripping the people, no to barrier walls. And I kept spraying these no's over and over again on the streets of Cairo. Over three years, I painted several uh, campaigns. I'll share one more with you, and this one is entitled uh, in, in Arabic, Aura means something that should be covered. There was a lot of aggressive sexual harassment uh, attacks on women who were protesting in the square, and I wanted to create this design on the street to encourage them to go back, because the, the term Aura, or something that should be covered, is usually um, called for women, like our hair is Aura, our voice is Aura, our body is Aura, and it should be covered. So to, uh, to counter that discourse, I said, your brain should be covered. And I stuck a series of naked women as a brain on the street, expecting that it's going to be peeled off, eventually giving another message. Yeah, your empty brain, your brain is a aura. So this is what our walls look like right now. We cannot demonstrate on the streets anymore. So for two years, I didn't spray and I didn't go down to the street, but it became unbearable, this oppression. So I took my stencils and I went to Freiburg in Germany where I was invited as an artist and I sprayed a new series of no. No to extremism, no to racism, no to blood, no to war, no to borders, no to discrimination, no to hatred, no to killing. No to stupidity, there's a lot of this going around. No to colonialism, no to violence, 
And I started spraying these nodes in different cities around the world. I thought, if I can't spray in my city, then other th the, the, world, the cities of the world can be my city. In New Orleans, in Vancouver, and in Istanbul. But there came a point where I felt that saying no is not enough, and maybe I need to say other things. And poetry always comes to my aid. I picked the poetry of a Palestinian poet. His name is Mahmoud Darwish. And I hand-lettered his first mes message that says, stand at the corner of a dream and fight. And I, this was painted in Vancouver in 2016. The next one was painted in New York. And it's a tribute for the women prisoners who are in jail. It's also by the same poet. And I was still spraying my no at the time. In Madison, we painted a community mural. It was zero degrees outdoors, so we painted it indoors first. But I used a triangular module to construct my design. And this whole shape um, is actually the letter no, again, but modernized. And to the impossible, no to the impossible is written um, in a triangular script. For Beirut, I painted my country is not a suitcase with a suitcase font. And in Marrakesh, I really wanted to summarize and abstract the letters. So I used very simple um, shapes, only three shapes, to create uh, the design, the poetry read, we love life if we had access to it. And the modules were only a rectangle, a circle, and a square. In Tokyo, I painted on this earth, there are things worth living for. And I had designed a I'm not going to call it a font, but an experiment of circular letters. And I was really happy to find that one of my letters was actually on the Shinjuku station. In Kefalonia, for the people who were drowning at sea, Kefalonia is an island uh, where, and this is a club where Ol Olympians were, were training um, for swimming uh, com competitions. And I painted those who have no land have no sea. I used a triangular script for that to illustrate the sails and, and just the ships that were drowning. In Amsterdam, I used a square script. And the message was, uh, one day we will be who we want to be. The journey has not started, and the road has not ended. Again, it's a a square font, quite playful. And I wanted to experiment with a um, pixelated Arabic script. So this was painted in Stavanger. And it, the big script reads, how big is the revolution? And on the left side, in a very small uh, script, it read, how small is the state? And in this, I played with two types of pixelated script. And finally, I painted a wall in Paris. Uh, it reads, I will dream. Um, and for that, I used an ancient Kufic script. This is uh, what Tahrir Square looks like right now. It's empty. There are no chants, and there's no graffiti on the wall. They would like you to think that everything is in order. Uh, but we will keep dreaming of the day when we co can go back to the square and paint it. Thank you.